Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbread. So I am so excited to be bringing you guys into the kitchen today for what I'm doing. I am canning and it feels like it's been a lifetime since I've done any canning. I have not canned uh, in this Arkansas homestead kitchen since we moved here. Uh, the last time I canned was probably back in January would be my guess. And I can't even remember what I canned back then. It's been so long. Well, a couple weeks ago, I was in here working on some recipes and I like to take my phone and, and set it up against the wall and, and have it playing podcasts or YouTube videos or what have you. And this particular day, I had, a, I had YouTube videos playing and I had just finished watching a video from Whippoorwill Holler when uh, a random video on YouTube started playing and lo and behold, it was from my friend Heather over at the Needy Homesteader and she was making a barbecue sauce. And this video was from like three years ago or something like that. And I was looking at this barbecue sauce and I was like, ooh, blueberries and apple for a barbecue sauce? I need to make this. And it's so funny because I didn't say anything to her. At least I don't think I commented or anything like that. But I decided I was going to make this barbecue sauce. Well, lo and behold, a few days ago, what does she post on her YouTube channel? She made the barbecue sauce again. And so that just kind of sealed the deal for me. And surprisingly, guess where Heather got that recipe from? She got it from Whippoorwill Holler. So, I mean, that was just like perfect. So what I did is I sat down and I watched both videos. I watched the Whippoorwill Holler video and I watched the Needy Homesteader video. And I kind of did a merge of the two versions of this barbecue sauce and came up with my own rendition of it. So I'm gonna share with you what I did. Now, I was so excited to start canning this recipe uh, yesterday that I did not realize how late it was when I started it. And I no sooner started it when I looked at the clock and I'm like, I don't have time to be doing this. So I took all of the ingredients, I transferred them to my slow cooker and I let it slow cook low and slow overnight to kind of cook down and actually reduce. But I'll talk about that in just a minute. So first let's go over the ingredients. Let me grab out my little notebook where I had taken all of my notes. So in this version that I made, and like I said, this is a kind of a combination of the two different versions. I used five cups of diced Granny Smith apples, four cups of blueberries, and I just used some frozen ones from the grocery store, seven cups of apple cider vinegar, five cups of brown sugar, half a cup of honey, and then two tablespoons each of granulated onion, granulated garlic, sea salt, black pepper, cumin, paprika. Then I added a teaspoon of red pepper flakes because I am a spice wimp and I'd rather start light and add spice later on. I added a half a teaspoon of ground chipotle and a half a teaspoon of smoked paprika. So I had combined all of those ingredients in my stock pot and I was beginning to heat them up when I decided, you know what? I have a chicken chili recipe that is an amazing recipe and one of the main spices in it is cumin. But one of the spices that goes with it that you don't always think of is cinnamon. And they just, they work so well together. So I decided to throw in a cinnamon stick as well as a bay leaf. And that's about the point where I realized what time it was and thought, I don't have time to be canning this tonight. And so I transferred everything here to my slow cooker. And like I said, I've had this cooking overnight and I wanted to kind of do this a little bit like a fruit butter, apple butter, blueberry butter. And so what I did is I lifted up the lid and I took my wood spoon 
I stuck it in there like that so you had this crack for it to vent. I covered it with a tea towel to make sure no dust or anything got in there. And I just let it go all night. And it has reduced down by half. It is so rich and so amazing. So now I'm ready for the next step. So look how dark and rich this has become. Oh my goodness, you can't hardly even tell that there's apples in there. Look how dark they are, that's gorgeous. So now I'm going to pull out the bay leaf and discard that. And then I need to find that cinnamon stick. It's gonna be in here somewhere. Oh, there it is. So now at this point, I'm gonna throw on an apron because we're fixing to use the immersion blender to puree all of this fruit into a sauce. And you want to be very careful when you do something like this because you don't want it you don't want the hot sauce to splatter all over you. You could also do this in a blender in batches to get everything uh, smooth. I'm gonna let this sit for just a couple minutes so that the air bubbles that got all in there from the immersion blender can kind of dissipate. And that'll give me time to gather all of my canning equipment. I've got my canner out already over there on the stove, but I need to heat up my jars that I've already washed and inspected. You always wanna check the rims for your, of your jars, make sure there's no flaws or chips or anything like that, even when they're brand new wash the lids, the rings, all that stuff. So I've already got those ready, but I need to pull out my canning tools, get those washed up and ready, and I'll join you back here in just a little bit, and we'll jar this up. All right, friends, so I have everything set up. We're getting ready to start jarring it all up. I put about two quarts or so of water in my steam canner, and I made sure I filled it right up to the bottom of the rack that is in there, right underneath where the jars sit, because this barbecue sauce, according to the instructions, processes for about 35 minutes, which is a longer processing time. And so I want to make sure that there is plenty of water so that the steam canner doesn't go dry. I added a splash of vinegar because even though the jars are not immersed in the water, they will still get mineral buildup on them just from the steam. And I've had the jars heating up. I've got everything set up. So let's get started. Now, I don't know how many jars this recipe is going to make, partly because I made this differently than uh, the two originators of this recipe. Uh, you know, their version was a thinner version, kind of like a glazing barbecue sauce or a marinade. So because I've cooked it down, it is going to have uh, less of an output. So I'm filling these jars to a half inch headspace, which of course is the distance from the top of the contents to the top of the jar itself. Giving it a little tap and stir, make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And I don't know where my bubble wand is, so I'm just using a chopstick, that works just fine. Give it a little wipe with the vinegar on a damp rag. All right, we'll grab a lid.
I've just kind of got a rotation. Take one jar out of the canner so I can put the um, funnel on it when I'm done. Filling one jar. Sometimes I'll just use a saucer or a, you know, a small plate. But a jar works just as well. Alright. Get rid of the bubbles. Now honestly, when I'm doing a jelly or something super watery, I will often skip this step. Technically, I shouldn't. Um, but this is thick. This is um, this is a thick barbecue sauce here. So I'm definitely making sure that I'm using my bubble wand. Dip in the vinegar. Give it a wipe. Jar is kind of hot. <laughs> Grab a hot lid. Now, a lot of the canning lid companies say that you don't have to preheat your lids anymore, that that's an old thing. But you know what? It's not going to hurt anything to do it. So I kind of leave that as do it if you want to. I will say that I almost never have a seal fail. Almost never. So my theory is if it works, don't fix it. So we didn't quite have enough to fill this jar, so this will be our use it up jar. Look how thick this barbecue sauce is. Man, that looks so good. And it is, y'all, I've tasted it already. One of the best barbecue sauces I've ever made. And I've made a few over the years. All right, so since my jars are filled, I'm going to go ahead and pull out this one empty jar that I didn't need. I'm going to put the lid on my steam canner and I'm going to turn up the heat because we want this to start heating up. Now I'm using my steam canner to process these jars. This is a high acid recipe, which means you would normally process it in a hot water bath canner. But anytime I'm doing something that isn't a humongous batch of something, I'm gonna use my steam canner because it heats up quickly, it cools down quickly, it's lightweight, it's easy to use, and it's just my favorite way to process high acid foods. I absolutely love my steam canner. I love it so much I wrote an ebook about it. Uh, if you are not familiar with my ebook, if you go to my website cosmopolitancornbread.com and scroll down on the page you'll see a link where you can sign up for my free email newsletter and when you get the newsletter you will get an email with a link where you can download the ebook. I include information all about the steam canner, how to use it, what it's safe for, tips. And I also included, I believe it was 10 of my favorite recipes to make in my steam canner. All right, so while my steam canner is coming up to temperature, I'm just gonna go ahead and close this up and clean up my mess and uh, wait for the jars to be done. Alright friends, so whether you are making this in a steam canner like I have or a hot water bath canner, the processing time for both versions is 35 minutes for this recipe. Again, I based that upon both of the original instructions where I got the recipes from and combined them into this one. After the jars were done processing, I transferred them over here to an out of the way spot on the counter. I placed them on my my counter mat or, or canning mat that was a gift from a precious subscriber. Uh, I got this one. I went to Alabama and got to see her again. She's the same person who made the other one that you see in many of my canning videos. 
So these jars are going to sit here overnight and then tomorrow I will remove the rings, test the seals, label them, and stick them in the pantry. But before I wrap this up, I just wanted to show you how thick that my version of this barbecue sauce became. Look at that. It is beautiful. And let me tell you, the flavor in this is amazing. Does have a little bit of a kick to it with the heat from the uh, red pepper flakes and then the chipotle pepper. And the sweetness is not overwhelming. Uh, it is a really rich barbecue sauce. And if you're looking for a brush on or dipping kind of barbecue sauce, this will do it. So if you would like to make this recipe, you will find a printable version of my version of this recipe on my website. I will put a link to that directly in the video description down below. So that is it for today. I am just so excited to be back canning in the kitchen, even though I haven't gotten around to renoing my kitchen yet. Uh, life has gotten busy. Mr. Smith's been traveling a lot and um, it'll probably end up being after my October trip now before this gets started. But even without the reno, I still have plenty of room for my steam canner, as you can see. Now my big all-American canner would not fit underneath this, but my small all-American canner would, my steam canner obviously does, and so just because the kitchen hasn't been redone yet doesn't mean I can't start canning. So it has been a great day canning here in the kitchen, and it has smelled so good with this barbecue sauce cooking.